So, last class we have discussed that from the description of the problem, how one can formulate the multi objective optimization problem in mathematically. Then we have discussed the what is called the preliminaries of vector calculus. The function is given which is a multi variable function, how to find out the gradient of a vector and simultaneously we have found out the gradient of vector if you once again differentiate with respect to x, then we have seen it becomes a matrix which may matrix is a symmetric matrix and its dimension is n cross n where the n is the number of variables involved in that function. <coughs> and that matrix is a symmetric matrix we have seen and with a example we have seen how to find out the gradient of a vector. Today, we will just discuss how to find out that hessian matrix. That means, if we have a differentiate that function twice second order differentiation is do it, you will get an hessian matrix, how to compute that matrix. So, <coughs> let us take one example that example same example what we have considered last class for a to find out the gradient of a vector. So, the example calculate the second derivative of the function f of x is equal to x 1 square plus twice x 1 x 2 plus 3 x 2 square plus 4 x 1 x 2 x 3 plus x 3 square. Calculate the second derivative of the function at point x is equal to x star here the dimension of x is 3 cross 1 okay. that means this as a x 1, x 2 and x 3 and these values are given 1, 2, 0. So, in order to find out the hessian matrix of this function that means the gradient of this function once again if you differentiate agree then this is called the second derivative of this function for a multi variable function. So, that can first you have to find out the gradient of this function f of x that last class we have found out f of x value at x is equal to x star first you let us call you find out the f of value f of x gradient of this one is nothing but a del f of x with respect to x 1 then del f of x with respect to x 2, then you have to find out the del f of x with respect to x. Since we have a three variables are there function is a this function f of x is a function of x 1, x 2 and x 3. So, this if you differentiate this function with respect to x last class we have seen it is 2 x 1 recall this expression x 2 plus 4 x 2 x 1 then differentiator of f of x with respect to x 2 that will come 2 x n square plus 2, 2 x 1 plus then 2 x this is uh, x 1 with respect to x 2 this is a bit this is sorry this is 2 x 2 sorry this is 2 x 1 then 6 x 2 then 4 x 1 x 3 and then if next is if you differentiate f of x with respect to x 3 then is a function of these two terms a function of x 3. So, it is a 4 x 1 x 2 plus 2 this is a this is a cube not square please see recall the last x function it is a 3. So, 3 x 3 square. So, this so, this function you have to once again you have to differentiate with respect to x that means vector 
this gradient of this vector once again we differentiate with respect to x. So, if you differentiate this with respect to x that is is denoted by this symbol f of x. So, this one we have seen it is like this way. So, del f of x del x 1 square del f square of x del x 1 del x 2 and del square f of x del x 1 del x 3. Similarly, this is del square f del x 1 and del x 2. This will be del square of f x x, this is del x 2 square, del square of f x then del x 2 del x 3 and last of this one is then del square f of x is equal to del x 1 of 3 del x 3 then del square f of x is del x 2 of del x 3 then del square of x is equal to del x 3 square. So, this is a 3 by 3 matrix and this is a symmetric matrix because a 1 2 position a 1 2 position is a 2 1 a 1 3 position a 3 1 and a 2 3 position is a 3 2 these are all identicals this off diagonal positions of this one. So, one has to calculate since we know the if you see this one one can calculate this one we know del f of x with respect to x 1 that value we know this value is 2 x 1 square 2 x plus 2 x 2 plus 4 x 2 x 3. So, once again you differentiate this with respect to x 1 that value will be coming 2 only. Similarly, you differentiate this del of x del x 1 already you have differentiate with we differentiate with respect to x 2 then it will come 2 del what is this with respect to this is a 2 plus 4 it will come 4 x 3 agree. Then again you can differentiate del f x plus del x 1 del x 3 this one with respect to x 3 you differentiate that will come your 4 x 2. Next is we know that del f of x in del x 2 expression this is this expression with 2 x 1 plus 6 x 2 plus 4 x 1 and x 3. So, you differentiate del f of x with respect to del x 2 square. So, differentiate with respect to x 2. So, that will come if you 6 then del l square f of x del x 2 and del x 3. So, differentiate this thing with respect to x 3. So, that will come 4 x 1. So, only left is now differentiation of del f of x with respect to x 3. We know this expression is 4 x 1 into x 2 plus 3 x 3 square. So, now you differentiate once again this one with respect to x 3. So, this will be a del f of x del x 3 square will be equal to 6 x 3. So, put these values in the that matrix this one and find out this matrix value. So, you have already calculated this values all partial derivatives, second order partial derivatives all, all this element we have calculated earlier. So, now if you put these values there then our matrix which we will call hessian matrix of del square of f x is coming is 2, 2 plus 4 x 3 plus 4 x 2, 2 plus 4 x 3 plus 6 4 x 2 x 1 then 4 x 2 4 x 1 and 6 x 3. So, now you have to find out the hessian matrix at a point 
that means, we have to find out the hessian matrix that matrix will be at point x is equal to x star and that matrix dimension is 1 3 cross 1 and that is given value is x 1 is 1, x 2 is 2 that is 0, 0. If you put in this expression that is 2 as it is, this x 3 is 0, so this will be 2, then x 2 is your 2 that will be 8, agree? then x 3 is 0, 2, 6 as it is, then x 1 is your 4, this x 2 value is 2, 8, that is x 1 is 1, 4, then x 2 is 0, this one. So, this is our Hessian matrix, this matrix is Hessian matrix. That means, if you differentiate the gradient of a vector once again with respect to x, that matrix you will get a Hessian matrix and the, that matrix for this particular example, when you use x, the value of at, at point x result x star is 1, 2, 3, this is our Hessian matrix and it is a symmetric matrix of this one and, and symmetric you can write it. Okay. So, next is before we go to this our what is called <coughs> in order to find out the optimum value of this function, which is a function, function is a several values of x 1, x 2 dot dot x n. Let us call the function f of x is a function, which is a function of x 1, x 2 dot dot x n. In order to find out the optimum value of the function at a point, then we must have few more mathematical preliminaries. So, that is next is quadratic function. So, <coughs> let us call that we have a function with two, if we have a function, we have a function with two variables x 1 and x 2, x 1 and x 2. The quadratic form form of the function is of the function is a x 1 square b x 1 x 2 plus c x 2 square. It can be a in addition to the constant term plus the linear terms. Okay. Let us call for the time being is this one, it is a quadratic form, quadratic function. Then this quadratic function, our problem is the, this is the quadratic form. So, this quadratic form one can express into a matrix and vector form. So, let us call this is equation number 1. So, one can express the equation 1, one can express the equation number equation 1 as like this way f of x equivalently one can express like this way, this equal to x 1, x 2, we have considered for the two variable case, then we extend for n variable case. This we can write it like this way, you see. This what is the coefficient of x 1 square is a, that will write in a 1 1 position of the matrix which are going to form. So, that is is a, then a 1 2 position is will be your our this matrix a 1 2 position means 1 2 position co coefficient is b that we can write it here, then 0, then what is the coefficient of x 2 square that we will write it a 2 2 position that means c into x 1 and x 2. So, if you just do the operation matrix vector operation, then whatever the results will get and with the row operation with this one, we will get exactly 
whatever the function is given. This is one, one choice or one can write it like this way x 1, x 2, then a 0, b c. The a 1 2 position or a 2 position I have just written here this one and this is x 1 and x 2. And also this if you do the operation you will get exactly whatever the function is getting. Now, <coughs> one can write also like this way. There are infinite number of choices are there to put that matrix this matrix. So, I can write it here because x 1 square coefficient is a. So, that will remain in a 1 1 position x 2 coefficient x 2 square coefficient is c that will remain a 2 2 position and this is x 1 x 1 x 2 coefficient and this is also one can write it x 2 1 position that this x 1 co coefficient x 1 and x 2 coefficient can be distributed with this off diagonal thing that sum must be equal to the coefficient of x 1 and x 2. So, I can write it also like this way there is no problem if I write it minus b 2 b and c is like this way. So, you see if I write this expression it will a 1 a x 1 square then c x 2 square then I will write it here minus b x 1 x 2 again there is a 2 b x 1 x 2. So, if you simplify it will come only b x 1 x 2. So, this is one of the most of the cases it is selected the matrix P is or you one can write it in symmetric matrix form. X 1 x 2 now see how I am writing in symmetric matrix form this one coefficient of x 1 and x 2 is b the half of this by b by 2 I will write in 1 2 position and b by 2 I write it 2 1 position. So, it will be a x 1 square a x 1 square coefficient is a x 2 square uh, square coefficient is c then coefficient of x 1 is b b I divided it into two parts to make the matrix symmetric. So, it will be a b by 2 and b by 2. So, you can easily realize that we have a infinite number of choices, but this choice has a I mean most popular choice of this one because we can conclude something from if the matrix is symmetric matrix regarding the function. Okay. So, our conclusion is P is not if you consider this matrix is P or this is also P this matrix this matrix also P this matrix of P P is not unique matrix to represent the function quadratic function into this form. What form this I can write it if you consider x 1 x 2 is a vector form you see here I can write x transpose this is vector. So, it is row vector. So, x transpose I can write it that p into x this is 2 cross 1 for this example. Similarly, I can write x transpose, but here p is different agree this form here also I can write x transpose p x of t, but p is different, but all these cases it is same as equivalently same as function of x 1 and x 2 and in this case p is symmetric matrix in this case p is symmetric matrix. is not unique. So, let us see that in general we have seen that out of the for this example out of the four p matrices which will give the exactly same value of expression of f of x 1 and x 2 out of this one is we have considered the symmetric matrix choice. <coughs> So, in general for n variables function is a n variables f f is a function of x 1 x 2 dot dot n x n 
a quadratic form of n variables n cross 1 which is a n quadratic form of write it n variables. What we can write it f is a function of x 1 x 2 dot dot x n which in vector form we can write x of n whose dimension is n cross 1 is I can write it this is equal to x transpose p x okay, where x is equal to x 1 x 2 dot dot x n whole transpose means it is a column vector of dimension n cross x is a dimension n cross n. Suppose the p is not symmetric, suppose p is not symmetric, suppose p which is n cross n this is n cross 1 this dimension will be n cross n. Suppose p is not symmetric matrix one can always suppose this one f of x just now we have written x transpose p n cross n into x whose dimension n cross and p is not symmetric and look this expression this is a scalar quantity the function is a scalar quantity this. So, I can always write there is no harm I can always write that x transpose p cross this x and half x transpose p x because suppose this constant it is 10 I can put it here 5 here 5. So, it is a 10 ultimately scalar. So, this quantity is scalar. So, this further we can make it after some manipulation of this one I can write it p into x plus since it is a scalar quantity again okay, then I can take the transpose of that one. So, this x transpose p x that transpose here since I have considered it is not a symmetric matrix that will be a p transpose. Note how I have written this one. If A is a matrix of dimension m into p, B is a matrix of dimension proper dimension p cross let us call n, C is a matrix whose dimension n cross r. Agree? So, we can multiply A, B, C this you see they are with proper dimension. If this is this agree, then this product if I result resultant of this matrices product uh, mat matrices after multiplication if you take transpose this is we can write C transpose reverse order you write C transpose B transpose A transpose and this property I have used it here to take the transpose of that one taking the transpose of that one or you can say just you can forget about this I am now taking the transpose of that one. So, this equal to now I can write it x transpose p x plus half this is half is there half then x transpose you can say this is a this is b this is c, c transpose mean x transpose then b transpose p transpose that this transpose of a transpose that means x. So, if you make the simplification of this one half you take common then you can write x transpose common then you write p of p transpose by 2 sorry 2 you push it inside okay, then x. So, this matrix is a p is a that is our non symmetric matrix take transpose of this one okay, and divided by 2 and this matrix we know if A is a matrix non symmetric matrix if add with A transpose result is a symmetric matrix. 
and we are dividing by scalar by quantity 2. So, all elements of p plus p transpose will be divided by 2 only. So, this is a symmetric matrix. And you see this we have derived from this expression. Okay? So, x transpose p x if p is not symmetric is not symmetric. We can write it this one x transpose p plus p transpose by 2 into x where this matrix is symmetric. That is this matrix is symmetric. So, whatever the results we will get it agree the expression in terms of what is called f of f function f which is a function of x 1 x 2 the same expression we will get it here also. That may x transpose p plus p transpose by 2 into x same, but only the advantage is we are getting this matrix is now become a new matrix which is a symmetric matrix, but scalar this function value scalar value expression in terms of x 1 will be same expression as this one. So, this is our conclusion of this one that even if p is not symmetric I can make the x transpose p plus p transpose by 2 into x is an expression whose values are same as this values in terms of x. So, <coughs> let us call now we define some of the function positive definite function definition of definition of a positive definite quadratic function. So, let us let us call we have a nth order quadratic function is there f of x is a function of n variables, which is in general we am writing p 1 1 x 1 square p 1 2 x 1 x 2 p 1 2 x 1 x 2 then p 1 3 x 1 x 3 and dot dot we have a n variables are there p 1 n x 1 x n plus p 2 1 let us call this is x 2 x 1 p 2 2 x 2 square p 2 3 x 2 x 3 plus dot dot p 2 n x 2 x n and in, the, in this way if you consider the all these things last term of this one will be p n n x 3 x n x n square. Again, which we can write it into matrix and vector form this is a matrix and vector form this dimension n cross n and this dimension n cross 1 where p is see clearly p 1 to p 2 1 is not a symmetric matrix deliver these two things are not same a 1 p 1 3 and p 3 1 third equation will come is not a same quantity. So, you will get a non symmetric matrix non symmetric matrix. Agree? So, our definition of positive definite matrix is that first the function f of x which is equal to x transpose p x n cross 1 this is said to be positive definite positive definite bracket when you will read the bracket we will read all all in bracket terms or we will get positive semi definite definite quadratic function. The function will be said to be a 
this function f of x means this function which you have written into matrix form matrix and vector form is said to be positive definite quadratic function if if f of x is equal to x transpose p x is greater than 0 or bracket term will will said to be positive semi definite when it is greater than equal to 0 for every x and x is not equal to null vector. When x is equal to null vector x 1 is 0, x 2 is 0, this function value is 0. Okay. So, this will be, so I, re, I repeat one second, the function is said to be f of x is said to be positive definite function okay. if, if f of x, x transpose x that means f of x function value will be greater than 0 for all values of x except x is equal to if it is not null vector always 0. If it is a semi definite the function value may be 0 or greater than 0 for every value of x which is not null vector if it is x is null, null vector. So, this is the definition of this one then second definition of this one that function is negative definite. Similarly, the function f of x is equal to x transpose p x which is a this is said to be negative definite or negative semi definite definite agree definite quadratic function function if f of x is f of x is a function of x 1 x 2 which can be expressed in terms of matrix and vector form the x transpose p x agree this value will be if it will be negative definite this value function value which is a scalar is always less than 0. If it is a semi definite this function value will be less than equal to 0. It function value may be negative or 0 this. So, there is a negative value. for every x whose dimension n cross 1 that may n cross 1 is not equal to 0. Now, this function may be indefinite that means, a function is said to be indefinite when this x function value can be greater than 0 or less than 0 or may be 0. So, we cannot say anything that for all values of x which is not equal to 0 the function value is either positive negative or 0 it can be anything. So, that is called what is called function is indefinite the function f of x which will to x transpose p x is said to be indefinite quadratic function function if f of x is x transpose p x is greater than 0 for some value some values of of x agree which is not equal to 0 null vector and f of x which is a x transpose p x is this value is negative for other values of x for other other values of x which not equal to 0. So, this is called indefinite quadratic functions. So, <coughs> now <coughs> 
so we can see next so you, you now we know the what is the positive definite quadratic function negative definite quadratic function positive definite positive semi definite quadratic function and negative semi definite quadratic function along this things in the same line what is called definition of positive definite matrix it's just linked with this only definition of of positive definite matrix so let us call for a p which is a n cross n matrix is positive definite matrix if and only if if you multiply by p matrix agree whether p is a symmetric matrix or non symmetric matrix whether it is a positive definite matrix or you multiply by p matrix with proper dimension pre multiplied by a row vector post multiplied by a column vector of same so it is a column vector post multiplied by column vector and pre multiplied by same vector which is row vector okay so this if this quantity is greater than 0 when x is not equal to this then we will call the matrix is positive definite but see this is a this is has become a quadratic function now x is this so what is this means if p is a positive definite matrix you pre multiply by x transpose any vector x and post multiplied by x if this quantity is greater than 0 for all values of x except x is equal to null vector then we will call matrix is symmetric matrix agree so, <coughs> next is positive definite you can say this if, <coughs> if p is equal to p transpose that means p is a symmetric matrix then we will call that this p is a symmetric matrix and that symmetric matrix is if it is greater than 0 and one thing is there p positive dependent in short it is written like this way p greater than 0 means p is a symmetric matrix p positive dependent in short it is written p greater than 0 means p is positive definite matrix so if it is a p p transpose greater than in, in 0 it indicates that p is a symmetric matrix but this does not indicate p is a symmetric matrix p may be non symmetric matrix also so next is the definition of positive semi definite matrix or positive semi definite matrix or negative definite matrix or you can say negative definite matrix definite matrix definition negative matrix is the same the for a function p whose dimension is n cross n is negative definite matrix that means in short it is written p less than 0 is I, I will read as a p is a negative definite matrix if and only if that x transpose p of x is less than 0 when x is not equal to null vector again okay. this is not a null vector so again this is a quadratic function and p may be a symmetric matrix may not be symmetric matrix but that function that p is if it is a non symmetric matrix or symmetric matrix is a negative definite if this x transpose p x which is a quadratic form in terms of variables x x means is set as a n components are there x 1 x 2 dot dot x n if this value will be less than 0 for all values of x except this one. So, next is definition is definition of of positive 
semi definite. Again, if P is is positive semi definite, positive semi definite, semi definite. In mathematically, it is written positive semi definite. P is greater than zero. I'll read it. P is positive semi definite. If and only if x transpose P x that is a scalar value, this value will be greater than equal to 0 when x not equal to a null vector. So, this is the definition of that one. Again is there we can also derive the definition of negative semi definite matrix, again definition of negative semi definite matrix. Negative semi definite matrix matrix. So, the matrix P n cross n is said to be negative semi definite matrix. In short, it is written like this way, we will read P is semi definite matrix, negative semi definite matrix, sorry. If and only if the quadratic form that means that matrix you pre multiply and post multiply, pre multiply by x transpose and post multiplied by x, x is a vector of dimension n cross 1. If these values, these values in scalar value is either negative or equal to 0, this for when x is not equal to a null vector, x dimension is n cross n. See. So, this is that. Now, question is coming that there are infinite number of vectors are there x exist. Then, how will you check this thing whether the matrix P is a positive definite matrix, which in turn that x transpose P x is positive definite quadratic function or not. So, there is an infinite number. The test for now the now the test for positive definite matrix and this is done for Sylvester criteria. Sylvester criteria criterion and this is valid. Sylvester criteria you can apply only if matrix P is symmetric matrix. Matrix this is for if P is symmetric matrix, then only you can symmetric matrix. So, a matrix is positive definite or not that test one can do by using Sylvester criteria again can do which is provided this matrix is symmetric matrix and according to the dimension according to the definition of symmetric or the positive definite matrix we know that x transpose p x transpose p must be x transpose p positive definite matrix this must be greater than 0 okay now if p is given p is may not be non uh, what is called symmetric so, we can always express that one I just shown you, we can al always write it this one x transpose p by 2 x trans uh, p plus p transpose by 2 x whatever the value we will get it this one and this value are exactly same. Okay? So, in other words that if p is not symmetric matrix we will convert into a this form p plus p transpose by 2 and then test with this matrix, which matrix is symmetric that p plus p transpose by 2 I am denoted by q. So, I am testing with this matrix, agree? q matrix. If q is symmetric in turn I can say this function if q is symmetric x transpose p greater than 0 will be there by using the Sylvester criteria test. I can find out whether q is 
positive definite or not. If positive definite, then this will get at the infinity. So, how to check positive definite matrix that Q? So, from now onwards, I will consider our P is a symmetric matrix. So, Sylvester's test for positive definite let P n cross n is symmetric matrix. Even it is not symmetric, I will convert into a P plus P transpose by 2 that one I will consider as a P, which is a symmetric matrix, symmetric matrix. Then Sylvester theorem tells, if it is a symmetric matrix, agree P, that P is positive definite, provided first check is all the diagonal elements of P must be positive. All the all the diagonal elements that means p i i i is equal to 1 2 dot dot n must be positive and non zero non zero elements this is the first condition. If this is there, all diagonals of P is like this, whatever the P matrix is given, convert it into symmetric matrix like this way, P plus P transpose by 2 and then check all the diagonal matrix are positive on and non-zero. If it is so, further you proceed like this way. All the leading, all the leading, leading principle minus means determinate must be positive. So, let us note what do you mean by the leading principle minus. The leading principle minus, the leading principle leading principle minus minor of order k of an n cross n matrix is obtained by deleting by deleting last mind it last n minus k k is the order n minus k rows and columns last n minus rows and columns okay so this is the leading principle minus so let us example uh, take an example and check how this test can be done whether a matrix is positive definite matrix or not. So, <coughs> if you consider this one example, this determine the nature of the quadratic function the nature of the quadratic function means whether the function is positive definite negative definite or positive semi definite or negative semi definite this nature you have to learn. so that function is given once again i can write into this general form which is a function of your three variables x so i am writing the dimension x dimension is three so 7 x1 square plus 4 x1 x2 plus 10 x 1 x 3 plus 5 x 2 square plus 8 x 2 x 3 plus 9 x 3 square. And where we have considered x is equal to a vector consists of x 1 x 2 and x 3. 
7 x 1 square 4 x 1, 10 x 1 x 3, 5 x 2 plus 8 x 2 x 3 and 9. So, this thing I can easily convert into a matrix and vector form that you use. So, x 1 x 2 these are there, then this p matrix this is the our that is this you have to fill up from this information. I told you that x 1 square is 7, so it will go in 1 1 position. First I will diagonal element say x 2 square is 5, so it will come here x 2 2 position x 3 square coefficient is 9, so it will come 3 3 position. Now you see x 1 x 2 product of x 1 x 2 agree. So, you can put it here 4, here 0, but problem is I want this is a symmetric matrix, so that I can test the Sylvester inequality condition whether p is this p matrix if it is symmetric this value will be greater than 0 provided p is positive definite. Okay. So, this I will equally distribute between the a 1 2 position and 2 1 position, so 4 2 2 equal. So, the, so that it will become symmetric. Then 10, what is the problem? x 1 and x 3, mean 1 3 position, 5 is here and 5 I am giving here, 1 3, 3 1 position. Then your 2 3 position, 2 3 position is 8, this is 4 and this is 3 2 position 4. So, this is our p matrix and this p matrix is a symmetric matrix. So, if we can show if p is a symmetric matrix, if you can show the p is a positive definite matrix means p greater than 0, if you can show positive definite matrix, then this function value is always greater than 0 for all values of x except x is not equal to null vector. So, let us say by using Sylvester inequality uh, Sylvester criteria, then what you have to find out? First, we have to find out the leading principal minor of order 1, leading principle minor of order 1. Then what is this? Then our how many rows and columns we have to delete from the last row? You see I have written n minus k, n is equal to universe 3 and order is k order is 1. So, I have to delete two rows, two columns from the last rows, two rows and two columns. So, only this element is left. So, that is 7, order is 7 and that is greater than 0. Next is leading principle minor of order. 2 k is equal to 2, here is k is equal to you can write k is equal to 1. So, do this is, is what then n minus k, n is equal to 3, k is equal to 2, this is 1. Last row and last column you delete from the matrix P, last row, last column. So, you have a only this matrix, this matrix is if you see this matrix, this will be a 7, last row, last column if you delete it then your matrix is determinant of that one, determinant of that 7, 2, determinant of this matrix 7, 2, 2, 5 and that determinant if you see this is 35 minus 4 is equal to 31 which is greater than 0 and last because if an order is n, I have to consider up to nth order minus, agree? Leading principle minor of order k is equal to 3. That means, it indicates n minus k, n is equal to 3, k is equal to 3. This is no rows, no columns you have to delete. That means, you have to take the full matrix what is p is given. So, determinant of that determinant of that matrix you have to find out this one that matrix is 7, see this one 7, 2, 
5, 2, 5, 4, 5, 4, 9. So, the determinant is you have to find out. So, that value if you find out this determinant you will get this determinant value is you know the how to find out the determinant value is greater than 0. So, according to Sylvester theorem if you see this one Albert, he is telling first what is the matrix P is there if it is a symmetric matrix only our case we have formulated this thing in the symmetric matrix check it this one that all the diagonal elements are positive or not this all are positive then proceed for the all leading minors must be greater than 0. So, all leading minors is order 1 is got 7 greater than 0 order 2 is we got greater than 0 order 3 is also greater than 0 that means what you can say this we can say the p is a positive definite matrix. Once p is positive definite matrix we by definition we know x transpose p x transpose p x is always greater than 0 this x transpose p x is always greater than 0. So, this function is a quadratic function is a positive definite matrix. Similarly, we can go for what is called positive semi definite agree. Okay? So, next class we will discuss positive semi definite and negative definite and negative semi definite how to test using the Sylvester criteria Sylvester criteria. Okay. So, thank you.